Greetings, I'm your host, Dr. Wolfiela, and when I'm not bringing human flesh to the local cookout, I'm here at the Wolfiela Rift Viewing Movies. It's 4th of July week, which means it's time to show your love for the grand old USA by blowing off your fingers with an M80. It's also time for me to finally riff view Uncle Sam, released in 1996. It's a film I've always meant to cover, but I always forget to make a video of it in time for the 4th of July because it's not a real holiday. I mean, it's a totally real holiday that's celebrated throughout the world. Yeah, totally. Uncle Sam was the final film directed by William Lustig, the director of both Maniac and the Maniac Cop trilogy. He's a big fan of the word maniac. Also, he's still alive. He just hasn't directed anything else in 26 years. After watching this movie, I wonder why. Uncle Sam was also written by Larry Cohen, the cult horror filmmaker behind It's Alive and The Stuff, who definitely brought a satirical approach to this script, but it's not exactly the best example of his work. Uncle Sam was also edited by Bob Morosky, the Academy Award winning editor of The Hurt Locker, and watching this movie's editing, it really shows that you gotta start somewhere. Enough background though, let's begin my riff view of Uncle Uncle Sam. The film begins where every movie about America should. The Middle East. A U.S. Army major and his men inspect the wreckage of a crashed helicopter shot down by friendly fire. It's a crime we did this. Friendly fire? I don't want to hear that crap! These things happen in war! I don't understand why it needs to happen. Just turn off friendly fire in the options menu. Only a single body is discovered in the wreckage, the charred remains of Master Chief, I mean... Master Sergeant Sam Harper. But Sam suddenly respawns and engages in some friendly fire of his own. <laughs> he is gonna get some really angry messages about this on Xbox Live. Oh yeah, the first guy who gets shot here is Chris Durand, who went on to play the worst version of Michael Myers in Halloween H2O. Isn't that some fun trivia? Don't be afraid. It's only friendly fire. Just in case you weren't sure all these guys were dead, the movie gives us a few extra quiet shots of them just to make it more clear, followed by the film's terrible opening credit sequence composed entirely of stock music and stock footage, really scraping the bottom of the barrel of Uncle Sam's stock footage. It's a very crudely edited montage that doesn't feel like it was made for a horror movie. Maybe on purpose as ironic patriotism given the satirical subject matter, but it still feels pretty low effort even if that's the case. I do gotta say, too, that the stock footage of a guy in a creepy Uncle Sam costume is scarier looking than the actual Uncle Sam costume used in the movie. I don't know how you can fuck something up like this, but you're doing yourself no favors by showing stock footage of something that looks better than what you actually shot for your movie. A couple weeks later, back in the good old USA, we meet the protagonist of the film, a little psycho named Jody. I'll get into why he's a psycho in a bit, but he's also the nephew of the Sam we met in the cold open. Wait, he's Sam's nephew? Well, that would make Sam an uncle, wouldn't it? An Uncle Sam! Holy shit, this movie works on so many different levels! Anyway, Jody looks up to his Uncle Sam, but not at all in a healthy way. Jody looks to his uncle in religious awe. His Uncle Sam is essentially a god that he unquestionably worships, so you can start to see the satire of American patriotism already. And I'll do whatever the president says to do, because he knows better. Jody is gung-ho about joining the military. He only reads war comics and even plays out battles with his G.I. Joe figures. Hey, wait! That's a collectible! Oh, you stupid fucking kid! What are you doing? Oh, dear God, no! All right, Ralph. You're dead. His name isn't Ralph, it's Destro! Jody even brings his Uncle Sam worship to school at show and tell. It's a purple heart. Were you ever in the army, Mr. Crandall? No, I... I can't say that I ever was. How come? Even scolding his teacher for not fighting in Vietnam. I grew up during Vietnam. Many young people, like myself, protested the war. My Uncle Sam said you guys were cowards. Yeah, instead of teaching kids, Mr. Crandall could have been burning them alive with a flamethrower. If only he wasn't a coward. Jody isn't even too thrilled about having dinner with his mom's new lover, a lawyer who manages to cheat on his company's taxes. You see, Jody, nobody likes to pay taxes. But before you know it, the government is taking half of what you earn. Which disgusts Jody. You mean you cheated them? Taxation is theft, Jody. 
So, yeah, you can also start to see why Jody's such a psycho. If there wasn't a killer Uncle Sam in this movie, you'd think he was the villain. People who don't respect the American way of life deserve to have their butts kicked. Jody's aunt, who had long been cuckolding her war hero husband, Sam, with the local deputy, is told by Sergeant Twining here, played by the recently deceased Bo Hopkins, that Sam's body was found. He's entitled to be buried with full military honors, Mrs. Harper. He was a hero. And it'll be returned to her for proper burial. <laughs> wow, good thing she closed the door. There was gonna be no way she'd be able to convincingly cry on camera. To let you folks know just how cynical this movie is, it's revealed that Sergeant Twining only took the job of delivering news that soldiers have died in the hope that he will get to fuck the widows of said dead soldiers. I must be batting 750 with a bereaved. And he hopes that he'll get some action from either Sam's wife or sister. I ain't gonna get a little piece of that action before I leave here. Tell you something else. Sister's not bad either. This information has no bearing on the plot, though. At no point does the sergeant attempt to make good on his claim of fucking either of the Harper women. This scene was just put in the movie to let us know that a character who seems to perform a selfless job serving his country has a sleazy and cynical motivation for doing it, and that even the most minor character in the film is a total scumbag. Eh, well, I volunteered for the job. Starting to like this movie, huh? The upcoming funeral and Sam's body returning home brings with it traumatic memories carried by Sam's wife and sister, who suffered abuse at his hands. I thought I'd almost forgotten the way he made me feel. Fear when I knew he was in the house and... But Jody's fucking stoked hanging around with his uncle's corpse, and I don't blame him. Corpses are cool as hell. It doesn't frighten him. He just hangs around all the time. It isn't until Uncle Sam's wake that some nuance is finally introduced in the form of the late Isaac Hayes, just a year before he started playing Chef on South Park. And in this film, he plays Sergeant Crowley. Sergeant Jed Crowley reporting his order. Who Jody's Uncle Sam looked up to as a role model, who inspired Sam to enlist in the first place. Sergeant Crowley lost one of his legs in battle, but he makes sure to explain to Jody that he didn't lose his third leg, too. But it wasn't so. Otherwise, how'd I get to be a father or a grandfather? Isaac Hayes knows that Jody was really worried about whether or not he still had his cock and balls. Don't worry, he still does. All those other parts made it back just fine. When Jody mentions that he intends to enlist in the military, the sergeant snaps, revealing that serving your country doesn't mean what it used to mean anymore. We knew what we had to do and why. Today is all mixed up. There's too much ambiguity now, and the brave men and women who serve in today's military are exploited by the government to fight in ceaseless, brutal, and bloody conflicts in order to maintain and defend our nation's business interests under the guise of bringing peace. Save some lives. Forget about killing. Somebody's got to be soldiers. Also revealing that Jody's Uncle Sam and some others like him didn't serve for the right reasons. Instead, Sam served in the military as an outlet for his violent bloodlust. And it scared me. You see, he liked killing. This scene and Isaac Hayes' performance in it is on another level from the rest of the film. There are no heroes. Only crazy men who lose their mind in the middle of a battle. You almost forget this scene is in the middle of a movie about a murderous Uncle Sam, but ultimately Jody shrugs off his chat with Crowley, still idolizing his Uncle Sam because killing people is still cool regardless of the motivations. You want to be a hero. Also, Crowley doesn't have a dick. Who's gonna listen to this guy? All those other parts made it back just fine. Later that night, Sam is snug as a bug in a rug asleep inside his coffin when some teenagers start spray painting swastikas on the graves of a local cemetery, and the cinders of a burned flag land on Sam's future burial plot, which resurrects the fallen soldier. <sighs> This film is a cautionary tale. The next time you're out late at night spray painting swastikas and burning flags at your local cemetery, be careful you don't disturb the grave of an evil zombie soldier or he'll wake up to kick your ass. Before leaving, Uncle Sam takes a moment to strongly consider beating the shit out of his little sister for old time's sake. 
Those were the good old days. Elsewhere, a woman wearing nothing but a towel is being spied on by a man in a bad Uncle Sam costume standing on stilts. This is like a really shitty 4th of July themed Animal House knockoff. After this, Uncle Sam jizzes in his 14-foot-tall pants. <laughs> he flees to the nearby park to get ready nice and early, flashing school children the following morning, when the undead Sam arrives with a pair of shears he, uh, got somewhere, I guess. The Sam on stilts flees the zombie when the frightened man suddenly hits a tree branch that is clearly made out of paper mache <laughs> And Uncle Sam claims what is rightfully his, but not without providing a haircut in return. Unfortunately, Uncle Sam decides he doesn't need the stilts for his bloodbath, which I personally feel is a mistake because there's nothing more practical for chasing victims than a nice pair of stilts. Back at the cemetery, as the gang of teens prepare to leave, a straggler decides to take one last leak on the graves of the road. When Uncle Sam arrives to give this guy a fresh coat of paint, who then falls into Sam's shallow grave. Wait, how did that guy fuck up his leg that bad falling into a hole that's two feet deep? Oh, whatever. Sam does the job his family should have done days ago and finally buries his grave with a substitute resident. Another one of the bros checks in on his dead bro, only to find himself about to be dead, bro. You know, this flag gag could have worked better if the guy was wearing a red and white striped shirt with a blue jacket with maybe stars on it. Oh, you know, whatever. I don't know why I'm trying to punch up a shitty horror movie that was released 25 years ago. We're shown stock footage of an apocalyptic desert, which means it's the next morning and the 4th of July. The whole town is preparing for its celebration of the holiday while George Washington downs a Red Bull, which is a historically accurate portrayal of our first president. Taylor, put the can of soda down. I want you to take this seriously. Oh, it's a hatchet. Where's the hatchet? You don't have it? Washington is missing his hatchet, though, which he also historically accurately used to chop down a cherry tree, which Mr. Crandall attempts to retrieve, but Uncle Sam beats the teeth to it. How did Uncle Sam know there would be a hatchet in this elementary school classroom? Anyway, the parade has begun, and you know, I'm not sure if this is an observance of the 4th of July or just a tribute to the village people, but whether it's the 4th of July or the village people are in town, Jody's gotta be there. I'm not missing this. Jody isn't the only one attending the festivities, though. Also arriving is the Cronin family. The matriarch Madge is played by PJ Souls. Yeah, she's totally in this movie. Totally. And she only brings her family to the 4th of July celebration out of pettiness over her son Barry being disfigured and left blind after a fireworks mishap last year. A totally convincing burn victim, what with the bull haircut and everything. Well, they won't have so much fun once we get there. I do gotta mention, though, that PJ Souls in the 90s was a real glow-up from Halloween. She's a total MILF in this movie. Man, oh man, I wouldn't mind having her show up to my cookout. Have her take a bite out of my hot dog, if you know what I mean. Oh, what I wouldn't give to call her mommy. Uh, anyway, uh, the festivities are underway, and one of the unpatriotic hooligans that got away the previous night is called upon to sing the national anthem, only to make a mockery of it. <laughs> Actually, he's going off. Never mind. But the very traditional Uncle Sam thinks otherwise. Okay, I can't believe this is what the villain in this movie looks like. He looks like a patriotic billy goat with a shaved face. The Sith Lord eyes don't help either. During the real singing of the national anthem, Uncle Sam takes it upon himself to inappropriately touch the local burn victim. Uncle Sam claiming to be a servant of Barry's will. Who are you? I'm here to do what you want me to. In a way, we're all just servants to Barry, the eight-year-old burn victim from Uncle Sam. That's how I like to think of life, at least. I'll make them all feel your pain. Because they need to add politics to everything, even Uncle Sam movies, Congressman Alvin Cummings arrives to take in the festivities as a desperate bid to get people to vote for him, but it doesn't seem like it's going to work out. Not to get you don't have much. Keep oh, being called. Looks said the crowd was going to be friendly, Dan. Elsewhere, a sack race is underway, and for some reason, most of the participants are adults, including that one hooligan who knocks over all of his competition, but they have the last laugh. <laughs> 
Well, that fall could have easily killed this guy for real, but I gotta admit, he's really dedicated to sack racing. Most people would have called it quits after hitting their head on 37 jagged rocks, and especially after seeing a killer Uncle Sam twice, but he takes it in stride. <laughs> okay, they could afford to make a decapitated head look this good for a three second shot, but this is the mask in the movie? Jody's mom, Sally, shows up at the celebration to check in on her boyfriend playing Abe Lincoln, but the guy plays Ford's theater Abe Lincoln a little too well, but damn, he's good. Well, Sally takes her boyfriend's murder pretty well, enjoying some popcorn, but her dickhead son just has to give his opinion about every recently murdered person. He was a crook. Jody, just be quiet. Despite the murders and the suspicious, creepy Uncle Sam hanging around, the 4th of July celebration continues as planned because nobody in this hick town has anything better to do. If Sam was around, this would never have happened. Jody is ironically convinced, though, that his hero, Uncle Sam, would have never allowed these murders to transpire, but it's here where Jody's mother and aunt reveal that they were victims of Sam's abuse. Your Uncle Sam wanted everybody to be afraid of him, especially me. And it seems to be implied that Sam married Jody's aunt Luis because of her resemblance to his sister Sally. I could have told her about what he'd been doing to me since I was six years old. Somebody who looks like the sister he abused her whole life that he could live with as an adult and continue abusing. But I was so happy the day that he got married and moved out of the house. Because then he'd have another victim instead of me. Sally allowed Louise to be Sam's new victim because it would mean he would finally leave her alone and terrorize another woman. But Sally consequently could never trust men ever again and fears that her son will continue Sam's toxic, abusive behavior. If we don't do something, he's gonna grow up just like Sam. I am gonna be like him. You see? It's an extremely heavy scene that's based in dark truths. Women dealing with men hurting them, choosing to be silent for years, and the world choosing not to believe these women when they finally speak up. Look, I don't want to discuss it, okay? Because it's a lie? The public unable to accept that their heroes could be monsters, and subsequently allowing these abuses to continue on. You're making that up. Why would I do that? Why would I want you to hate him? But simultaneously, this is a killer Uncle Sam movie. What did they think their audience was really going to be? I mean, including this scene in a movie like this is insane. Well, he fought a war in our house. All our lives. Anyway, after that realistic discussion of domestic abuse, a teenage girl finds a decapitated head in this barbecue and she's forced to give it company. Oh, thank God. I was afraid I was going to have to learn something about not exploiting violence towards women for my own entertainment. Fucking dodged a bullet there. Oh, and what's a 4th of July horror movie without fireworks? And this movie provides us with the ultimate display of patriotism as a sleazy politician is crucified upon the fireworks display as onlookers passively watch as he's blown to bits. Savage as fuck! The deputy tries his best to help, but he learns the hard way that explosions kill people, and so can flagpoles. Aw, oh, man, both the boyfriends of Sally and Louise are dead. The ladies would be pretty bummed out about it if they liked them to begin with. What's going on? What's happening? Jody tries to get his little burn victim friend out of this 4th of July massacre, but Barry reveals that he knows who the killer is. Who? He talked to me. He touched me. Okay, Barry, please say less. Well, he is an uncle after all. It would definitely make sense for him to be touching kids. My Uncle Sam? But he's dead. I never said he wasn't. Jody and Barry team up with Chef, I mean Sergeant Crowley, who pushes Barry's wheelchair 10 miles back to Jody's house, where the gang confirms that not only is Uncle Sam not in his coffin, but the Ponehound Sergeant has taken Sam's place. Oh, now who's gonna inform his wife that he was killed in action? What are we going to do? Get out of here for sure. Realizing that Jody's aunt is in danger, Crowley heads to Louise's house to protect her and brings a little boy along with him as backup, and they discover within the house a discarded, shitty Uncle Sam mask. Take a good look at me, soldier. Howard Stern! You're nothing, so just die. Uncle Sam takes Crowley's words to heart and decides to die. <laughs> Okay, not really. Don't worry though, Isaac Hayes got beat up worse at the Scientology Reprogramming Center. This is nothing. Luis proceeds to shoot her husband six times. <laughs> oh. Not again. 
Because that'll do. Thanks, Jody. Really helpful attitude to have in this fucking situation. Jen, get the cannon. Jody does unsubtly suggest that they use the 4th of July celebrations cannon to kill his Uncle Sam, right in front of the undead patriot himself, who doesn't suspect a thing while Isaac Hayes spends 15 minutes retrieving an unattended cannon from the park, and once the third black winner of an Academy Award gets into position, Jody guides his uncle into the firing line. <laughs> Oh dear God, they just remodeled that porch! Luckily for Sam, that red, white, and blue suit from Party City was flame retardant, but Isaac Hayes makes sure that Jody's Aunt Louise has no hope of ever rebuilding her home again. Yes. In the end, Jody sets fire to all of his war toys as his mother looks on proudly. Jody deciding to live the rest of his life as a commie hippie pacifist who would rather suck Karl Marx's cock before serving his own country. This movie was dedicated to the memory of Lucio Fulci, who probably began rolling in his grave as soon as they typed his name in on the video editing software. Oh yeah, there's also a post credit scene of the stilts guy falling down. <laughs> it almost makes the rest of this fucking movie worth it. Uncle Sam is a satirical slasher movie with some interesting ideas and very questionable delivery. It is a pretty admirable effort as a straightforward slasher movie made in the 90s, the same year as Scream, but you do I kinda wonder where the two million dollar budget for this movie went, but I'll give you an answer. In the producer's nose! <laughs> I give Uncle Sam the costume used in the movie out of the stock footage costume. How could I possibly be proud to be an American when movies like this are allowed to be made here, I ask you? What's up, This video is made possible through the pledges of my Patreon supporters, and I'd like to give a very special thanks to the kind folks pledged to my shoutouts tier. All of the support on Patreon means a lot to me, and it helps my dark influence continue to grow. If you like this video, like it, and if you loved it, click the subscribe and bell buttons for more vids. Be sure to also keep in touch by following me on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dr. Wolfula. While I still have your attention, consider pledging to my Patreon to support the channel and get bonus content like previews, VIP Discord server access, private movie night streams, and credits in videos. Consider pledging at patreon.com slash drwolfula. Also, check out official Dr. Wolfula t-shirts and other merch on tpublic.com slash user slash drwolfula. Thanks for watching. See you all next time. Dr. Wolfula signing out.